Meet Calculon. This is a dual socket 1366 server with a pair of Intel X5675s in it. So that's um, a pair of six core processors uh, with hyper threading. So 12 threads at three and some change gigahertz minimum. There is 16 two terabyte SAS drives in here. This machine uh, currently hosts the website. It um, has the camera system for the house using ZoneMinder, and that's with eight cameras, as well as a massively parallel police scanner and central storage for the house, all in one box. Now, massively parallel police scanner, this is interesting. This is called Glances. This is a wonderful utility in Linux. I'm sure anybody who's used Linux is probably familiar with TOP if you've wanted to look at processes on the command line interface. Glances is a step up from that. It gives you uh, disk throughput as well as you know your typical TOP CPU usage uh, with disk usage. And then of course all of your RAM and CPU statistics up here. You can see here that we're 40 to 50 percent load on a busy day. This is usually pretty much pegged around 70 percent load. Uh, when you have a system with hyper threading, anything 70 percent load and beyond is basically fully loaded. Uh, you can see here we're doing massive amounts of context switching. And all of this is happening through the bandwidth being provided to two USB ports from eight software-defined radios. And these eight software-defined radios are plugged into this distribution amplifier right here, which is actually pretty wide band. Uh, these modern ones will do basically 50 megahertz to a gigahertz or something like that, 75 megahertz to a gigahertz. Um, and so that goes into uh, an antenna that will soon be attached to the tower in the backyard. And so this uh, massively parallel police scanner all feeds into a site. Here's a look at our recorder screen. These are our systems that we are receiving. Normally we have 11, um, but right now we've just whittled it down to five because we keep overloading the system on the busier days. And even with just these five, the system will still overload just because of the incoming USB bandwidth that has to be processed from the radios. These are our radio receivers here. There are seven of eight. Uh, the, only, the reason why we're missing the eighth one is because I'm using that uh, for other things. And here are the given call slots in each radio. Um, sometimes we don't need the full 25 slots for each one. That uses unnecessary CPU bandwidth. So we've sized these appropriately. Um, to handle the number of calls during the busier times. Since the vast majority of the systems sit within a frequency that the uh, Radio DS5 covers, you can see that there's more call slots dedicated to potential traffic. And so these are all idle available slots waiting for incoming calls. As you can see here, these are the calls as they come in. It lists here. Um, you know, what it is, where it comes from, the system, and the, t the time and date stamp. Uh, here's some audio data and the CPU load. Um, so I've actually had this running for, uh, oh, where does it show that? I've only had this running for like an hour or so maybe, uh, maybe two hours at the most, and we've already accumulated uh, something like eight hours worth of audio. Um, and we've had 2,200 calls within that time. Uh, with all 11 systems populated on an average week, we can receive three quarters of a million calls. So one call is one radio transmission from one person to another. So that's three quarters of a million radio transmissions per week that we are capturing and coding and recording. And all of that gets cataloged to a database. I received just about everything within a 70 mile radius. And here's the web interface for that. This is uh, Trunk Player. And this is, you know, somebody else's software that we've integrated uh, to make work with this system. This isn't my idea. Uh, this is standing on the shoulders of giants. I uh, had a friend who set this up for himself, and I was like, hey, I want this system too. I live in a 
fairly metropolitan area, and I wanted to give it a shot. So uh, I get everything. It's it's far more than police. It's police, fire, EMS, the airport, uh, Excel Energy, which is our you know utility company out here, uh, schools, universities, the convention center, uh, the light rail operations. So it is literally everything that is. Uh, pertinent to city infrastructure and operations um, for everybody within 70 miles, basically, that uses these systems. Um, we're not able to get all the systems, and that's because I don't have enough CPU horsepower and I don't have enough radios. Uh, it takes more of those two things to cover more systems. The antenna that we're using for this project is a Browning, and the model number is a BR-136, and this has uh, chokes and filters and all that good stuff. So you get 136 through 174, 380 through 520, 698 through 960. So it's good enough for all this stuff, pagers, and listening to trains and air traffic control. Let me show you the antenna setup outside here. So. Uh, this is the radio tower that the antenna will be going on, but the antenna for this particular project is actually right there, and I uh, just made a little platform to stick it to with some radials and all that good stuff. Uh, we'll actually be mounting it probably somewhere near about halfway up, maybe three quarters of the way up where that is, um, so you'll see that coming in a couple of months. but. Uh, the amount of radio transmissions and information that you can receive using this system is unbelievable. And actually, what I want to do is take this a step further and feed this into a speech-to-text engine in real time. And the reason why is because uh, we've already got audio recordings of these files. And so if we feed these files into a speech-to-text engine, we have transcriptions of these audio recordings. And then we can actually look for keywords. So we can compare this against a database and look for keywords like gunshot or bomb or, you know, whatever. And since we get everything from school districts to buses to the light rail to whatever, you have different accounts of the situation really before even the police get called in many instances. And so uh, with that, I can have it send a notification email with the transcript of the transmission that it captured that contains the keywords. And then at that point, I can listen at my discretion uh, if I decide that that's an event worth uh, following up on. Uh, if I can get this all together and working, this is potentially a tool that I would like to offer to local television stations um, as a way to sift through all of this. When you're in these large metropolitan areas, a lot is happening at once, and the police aren't always, you know, forthcoming or upfront with information. And uh, this is a way to get to different first-hand accounts of a situation uh, and other information, you know, that might be outside the realm of what you would otherwise hear from the official narrative. So uh, this was just you know, a quick look at one of those projects that I've been working on. I was making this video. This came in. 
Second RP also was not sure if it was a gun or a camera. Two, copy. 1555. All units, code one, channel one. Code one, channel one for the man with the gun call. All other units go to channel two at 1555. Uh, the male got back into his vehicle and appears to be leaving eastbound. It's a silver four-door Ford-style or type sedan, unknown flight. Copy. And he is eastbound on Highway 128. Is that on westbound? Copy. The guy who had either the gun or the camera got in the passenger seat. Copy. Some more stuff coming up soon, as you can see here. I have a broken solar panel. Thanks, FedEx. I got a, a whole solar panel sitting here on the table. Um, so working on this project, I'm about to head out to North Carolina and finally get that uh, camper driving, the Cadillac camper combo. So look for that coming soon. And uh, we'll have some server videos and some electronics videos and some ECU reverse engineering videos. Um, I, once I get back, I'll be finally starting on the cylinder head flow bench, the 3D printed flow bench. Um, so look for that soon. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, or suggestions, hit that comment box below. Remember to stick your thumb up, comment, and subscribe.